Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back for another episode, and I'm absolutely thrilled to have with us today Deb Rouse. Deb is the executive director of the Kerrville Folk Festival. This podcast is long overdue. So, Deb, first of all, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. Thank you for having me, Tom. I appreciate it. So, Deb, you are the the newest executive director. Could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to your current role? It certainly was an unconventional journey. I don't come out of the music business. I have just been a fan for a really long time. I grew up coming out to the festival. The first festival I attended, I was 12 years old. My parents were longtime fans. In fact, my mother has only missed one festival since 1975. So I really grew up at the festival continue to go all the way through high school, through college, even a couple of times in law school. And then I took a little break, career and life happened. About 2000, I came back to the festival and realized how much a part of my soul it was and started coming to every festival since then. We hosted a camp at the Kerrville Folk Festival, the folk singer-songwriter competition finalists. And as part of that, I started volunteering in the office. So I knew a lot about how the festival ran. And eight years ago, my husband and I sold our house in Houston, Texas, bought an RV, retired from our jobs, and went on the road traveling North America, going to a lot of folk festivals around North America and Canada and the U.S. And when this job became available. I did a lot of soul searching and decided that this was something I really wanted to do. My background, what my day job was for 20 plus years, was being a consultant in the long tail insurance industry. I helped mostly Fortune 500 companies negotiate settlements with their insurance companies to pay for environmental cleanups. And That has absolutely nothing to do with the music business, but I am a very organized, very process-driven person, and a huge part of my job is the the behind-the-scenes, the paperwork, and the systems, and the processes. So I was very grateful that the uh, executive search committee decided to hire me, and my husband and I moved our RV onto the Quiet Valley Ranch. And I've been there ever since, working very hard at getting my festival sea legs under me. And uh, you said uh, you've lived there ever since. When was ever since? Since April. We are coming up for the Welcome Home Fest, October 12th through the 15th at Quiet Valley Ranch. Tell us a little bit about that event. This event's going to be a little bit different for us. We've done three or four Welcome Homes in the past, but this one we hired someone to do booking for it who had previously been booking our late night stage at the Kerrville Folk Festival. And Amy Sue Berlin booked this festival primarily geared towards a younger, hipper vibe than you might see at our traditional Kerrville Folk Festival. And of course, the very fortunate coincidence, it wasn't really a coincidence, that it happens during the annular eclipse is just a bonus. Does Kinky Friedman have a younger, hipper (laughs) following than I'm aware of? He does not. We do have some older, more established traditionalist acts, not that you would ever call Kinky traditional, but we do have a few of those. Steve Fisher is one of our longtime Kerrville attendees who will be on stage. Michael Hurley is a well-established folk singer from back in the 70s and 80s. He's been around for a long time. And of course, Kinky Friedman, the indescribable Kinky Friedman. Former candidate for governor, Kinky Friedman. Yes. (laughs) The annual eclipse is coming that weekend, correctly noted. What do you guys have planned around that event? Or is it a celebration? Is it just what would you say? It will be a celebration. One of the interesting things that we're doing is on the ranch, there is a hill, an elevated space that's called Chapel Hill. 
and it's considered a sacred space by many of our regular attendees. We do weddings up there. We do memorial services up there. We do our worship services up there. And for the annual eclipse, we are going to have a sound bath. And what that is in conjunction with the annular eclipse up on Chapel Hill, we're going to have a lot of atonal accompaniment from a variety of artists while that is going on. And that experience is designed to, quite frankly, be a little bit cosmic and connect us with the earth and the universe. And it should be a lot of fun. Will this event for the annular eclipse lead to the total eclipse that we're anticipating in April of 2024? It will indeed. We This is a little bit of our trial run for that. I'm sure as the Kirk County is expecting droves of people for that weekend and that event. And we have planned a festival around that and we're calling it Kirk Lips. And that festival will provide music, but the biggest thing that we really wanted to provide with that was a way for our regular attendees to come early and to stay later past the solar eclipse, specifically to avoid some of the traffic. So no one wants to just sit around in a field for three days waiting for the solar eclipse. So we are gonna be having music and some events around that. It will be a very, we're hoping for a very chill, laid back event as much as we can have with that many people in Kerr County. But that's our goal and to let our people come early and stay late to avoid the what is likely to be the parking lot of I-10. You mentioned a little bit earlier, you came in April to get your sea legs, said you were trying to change a jet engine at going 40,000 miles an hour at, <laughs> at 40,000 feet or 5,000 miles an hour at 40,000 feet. But what was that first festival like for you that we just concluded this summer? It was amazing. The wonderful thing about the Kerrville Folk Festival and the fact that we are 52 years old is we have an amazing group of volunteers who come out every year who really do their jobs and know their jobs and care about their jobs, all just because they love the festival. And our volunteer coordinators did a great job. And quite frankly, the foundation, the festival and the foundation have just an awesome staff. I sometimes joke during that festival, I feel like it just runs itself, which is, a little bit of an exaggeration, but not a, a huge stretch. We have done this so many times. Everyone knows their job. Everyone knows what has to happen, that the checklists and everything else come together, not always perfectly, but pretty darn good for an 18-day festival. So what were some of the highlights of the 2023 Carville Folk Festival for you? One of them was seeing Anais Mitchell, and I know her name is probably not as recognizable in Texas as it could be. She uh, was a longtime volunteer who uh, entered our singer-songwriter competition, the New Folk Competition, and won, and went on to write a hit Broadway play musical called Hades Town that was awarded several Tonys. The score for that won a Grammy and she was just amazing. And she came back and played both our regular stage and our late night stage. And that was really just very magical for us. Can you describe how the May slash June event is different than what we have upcoming for the Welcome Home Fest? Our 18 day, first of all, it's those are much shorter. An 18 day festival is a long festival. We do tend to try to book probably, we always try to book a variety of music. We'll probably stick to our more, some of our more traditional artists, our more sort of traditional folk programming than we will at either of these two events. There's a lot of other things going on during the Kerbal Folk Festival. You've mentioned it several times, the new songwriters competition, but I believe there's also workshops or classes. There are. Could you tell us about those? Sure. We have a songwriting school. 
that's led by a gentleman named Steve Seskin. He's wrote, written well over t- many hundreds of songs, but he's widely recorded in Nashville. He's had a couple of top hit songs. The song, I don't know if you've heard it or not, Don't Laugh at Me, was picked up and recorded by Peter Yarrow from Peter, Paul, and Mary. And from that, Peter went on to establish the Don't Laugh at Me Foundation designed to combat bullying in the schools. That He runs that program. It's a wonderful songwriting workshop for all levels of songwriters or aspiring songwriters. We also have harmonica workshops, ukulele workshops, guitar workshops. We have worship services out there. We have family concerts during the day. And of course, what we consider our flagship, the Kerrville Folk Festival, Grassy Hill New Folk Singer Songwriter Competition. And for that competition this year, we had 950 entries of two songs each. And from that, we choose 24 finalists who come to the festival and play. And from that, we choose six winners. And that contest is 50 years old and has a number of very illustrious alumni. Lyle Lovett was a finalist back in the day. He did not win. Robert Earl Keane was a finalist. Steve Earl was a finalist. Lucinda Williams. It's a pretty amazing list going back over time. You also mentioned the Threadgill Theater. Could you say what that theater is and what it's for and how you use it during the Folk Festival? I absolutely can. The Threadgill Theater is our campground stage, and we use it primarily for daytime events during the big festival because it's shaded. It is a covered outdoor venue. It's a smaller venue that we use for our daytime programming during our big festival because it's hot. And then at nighttime, we use our larger outdoor theater, the Kennedy Outdoor Theater for Welcome Home Fest, we will only be using the very, the much more intimate Threadgill stage. Uh, I've often heard that some of the m- most interesting music and best times occur after the main stage shuts down. They do. Tell us about that. We have a very robust campground circle culture, and it's been that way for a very long time. We are a camping festival, but the re- a lot of the business around music and booking happens at our campfires. The campfires vary in terms of skill set and the kind of vibe that they have, but they're really song picking circles. And people will sit around. It's often considered a rite of passage to stay up all night playing songs around campfires and then going up to watch the sunrise on Chapel Hill. We do have... For example, Michelle Shocked, it really hit the the charts with her campfire songs. Those were all recorded around campfires at the Kerrville Folk Festival and put on a record and became one of her best-selling records. And it really is an amazing, beautiful thing that happens out in our campground. And at any given time, especially during our large festival, After hours, there are probably at least 50 song circles on the ranch, and people will come and stand on the outside and listen, and there's a certain etiquette to playing in one of those circles that you don't just grab an open seat. You usually wait to be invited, or you sit in a circle and after it com- the song circle comes around to you and you play your song, it's considered very bad etiquette to just immediately get up and leave. You have to like stay for at least a couple more songs just to be polite in some ways. So it is a- an amazing part of our culture and one that I think sets us apart from many other festivals around the country. Where are you in your planning for the May 2024 festival? We are starting our booking process right now, lining up in particular sort of, we don't really have headliners, most folk festivals, they don't have headliners, but getting our bigger names lined up and in place. I spent this past weekend at the Southwest Regional Folk Alliance, which is a gathering of artists, talent, and booking agents, and venues and festivals like myself, scouting talent. 
So we are pretty much booking year round. I'd also point out we have other programs that go on other than just our festivals. We host a music camp for teens in the summer. We just concluded that in July. And that takes mostly underprivileged kids through the boys and girls clubs onto the ranch to get to find their own voice, to do some songwriting, to get exposed to music and poetry and writing. And at the end of that festival, every teenager who participates goes home with either a guitar or a ukulele of their own. We also do the Music at the Mansion series with Shriner University, which is a subscription service that hosts eight concerts a year over at Shriner. And we bring in musicians to play those that are representative of who we book on our main folk festival stage. What, what, how many people do you expect for this next weekend, the Welcome Home Fest? We expect between 500 and 600. It is one of our smaller festivals, which also makes it more intimate and, in my opinion, a lot more fun. So it will be smaller. We are capping our attendance at the Perclips Festival at 2,000 people, primarily because the question becomes how many cars can we fit on Quiet Valley Ranch? So my nightmare scenario is selling people tickets and having them show up and us not have any place for them to park. We're looking at a lot of logistics for a very unique event. And there are some really unique logistic challenges because there are no hotel rooms in Kerrville to put our artists up at. We're booking artists and saying, but you're going to have to camp. That's been an interesting experience. There are a fair number of musical acts that are not accustomed to camping. So what's the role of the foundation? The foundation is our parent corporation, so to speak. It is a 501c3. Its mission is to promote singer songwriters and expose as many people as possible to the folk music in general and the singer songwriter genre more specifically. It, it does fundraising. We do fundraisers out there. We are membership supported. So we have members who join and get like certain benefits. You'll see people around town sometimes wearing Kerrville Folk Foundation t-shirts. Uh, and it's, it's really the governing body that then everything else, the Kerrville Folk Festival, Kirk Clips, Welcome Home Fest, Music at the Mansion, our teen camp all fall under that umbrella. Deb, unfortunately, we are near the end of our time for this episode. But before we leave, I wanted to ask you if our listeners wanted any more information on the Welcome Home Fest, the Kerrville Folk Festival, or really any of the topics we've touched on, what might be the best place for them to go? Best place for them to go is our website, kerrvillefolkfestival.org is the best place you'll see that's where you buy tickets that's where you can become a member that's where you can see our lineup and our schedules and pretty much everything you ever wanted to know about us we also will be having a brochure that will be in the Kerrville daily times in the next couple of weeks that will have our full schedule and how you go about buying tickets so they can also look for that Deb, I wanted to thank you again for taking the time to visit with us, and I hope we can continue this conversation. I hope so, too. It's been great fun. Thank you. Thank you.